What is up, my NeoVim friends? Today, I'm going to talk to you about rendering some images inside of NeoVim using Tmux as well, which is a really hard thing to do, apparently. Basically, we're combining three awesome things, which is NeoVim, Tmux, and rendering images. I'm really excited to show you this. What I have working is a little bit of a hack, but I think in the future it will be a lot smoother and I'm kind of working on an idea that we can make it smoother. I'll show you what I got working initially and then I'll show you some other things that I tried but did not get working. I've had a few people that reached out and commented saying they wanted to see some of this image rendering inside of NeoVim. If you ever have ideas or anything you want me to look into for videos, let me know. This is a result of all of those comments so I appreciate everybody asking the question. As with most of my videos, if you wanna see this in text form, check out the linked article in the description and you can see and read a little bit more detail of what things I went through and how to get this configured yourself. Before we jump into the solution and how I configured it, there's a little bit of background, especially with graphics in the terminal. The thing that people depend on and is kind of the gold standard nowadays is the Kitty graphics protocol. Basically, this was developed by the creator of the Kitty Terminal emulator, COVID, and I'm probably saying that wrong, so apologies, but this allows us to have a standard for rendering graphics and gives a flexible and performant protocol that allows the program running in the terminal to render arbitrary pixels and graphics to the screen. Basically, this means that there's a standard approach to images and graphics in the terminal, which is how we can have each terminal emulator focus on specific features and not implementing their own image rendering. In this video and also the examples and how I got this working is inside of the Kitty terminal emulator. Make sure you use that if you're trying to replicate that, but there are other terminals that do have this feature or rely on that same protocol. Westterm, console, and waste are all three of those. So this may work in there, but I'm, I have not tested it. So let me know in the comments if this is something that works for you in those other terminals. The command that I used initially to check out and see if this worked in my terminal inside of Tmux is this one right here, which is kitty, iCat, and then some path to an image. I'm using a PNG. I think that a JPEG and many other image formats should work for you, but this is the one that I tested with. So if you run this command kitty and iCat, then you should be able to see an output of an image in your terminal. And you can see that I'm using Tmux because of the top header there, where it's showing the Obsidian Vault and the InVim session tab. Now that we know that Kitty and iCat works in our terminal and in Tmux, we can install the plugin that I actually got to work, which is image.invim. I'll put a link to this in the description as well, so you can check out the install page, but essentially we need to install some of the dependencies. So image magic, a specific version of Lua, which is 5.1, a Lua Rocks plugin, which is the magic plugin, and then we need to set some config in Tmux and a couple other things. So let's get started with installing Image Magic. To do that on a Mac, you do brew install Image Magic, just like this. This will run and you can install it. After installing Image Magic, which will take a little bit because it has a lot of dependencies, then you need to add Lua 5.1 and make that the version you're gonna be using in NeoVim. Try this with other versions, but this is what the plugin required at the time of this video and how I got it to work. So what I use is I use ASDF for all of my language versions. So add a plugin, which is this plugin here to be able to manage that. After you run that, then you can do ASDF install Lua 5.1, and this will run, and then you install this language version. And then last but not least, you need to echo the Lua 5.1 version into your tool versions. This is specific to ASDF, so however you manage your language versions whenever you're in a specific directory. This is how you want to do it. Next, we need to install a Lua Rocks plugin, which I'm not sure the overlap between what we're installing here and just installing Image Magic, but basically we need to have this installed so that it'll work inside of our minimal config. So if you run this, it'll run and execute and it'll install the Lua Rock. From there, you should be able to use it inside of our minimal setup, which I'll show you in just a second. The final thing we need to set up inside of Tmux is this line right here, which is to allow pass-through and make sure that all of that information is shown and it shows in Tmux. So add this to your .tmux.conf file and you should be ready to use the minimal setup. Most of the plugins that I experimented with have this minimal setup file and for image.invim, this is no different. Basically, we wanna make sure that this plugin works outside of our normal NeoVim setup just to 
pressure test everything that we have configured in our terminal. So I'll leave a link to this in the description, but you basically want to go to this URL for the minimal setup Lua, and you want to click this copy raw file, and then we'll go back to our terminal. And from here, we can do nvim minimal setup Lua, open this up. Doesn't matter where this is, doesn't have to be in your nvim config. I just put this here. So we'll write this file and we'll quit it. And then we'll run this command nvim clean dash C, and that'll pass in this Lua file and minimal setup. If we run this and we'll see that both of the images show up and they're present and they load inside of NeoVim. If you see an error about failing to load image magic or failing to load Lua rock or something like that, try doing a brew install package dash config, and that should hopefully get your problem fixed. Now that we have our minimal setup and we know that it works, Let's jump into our own NeoVim config and configure the plugin and also the Lua Rocks magic. If we go into our config, then we find file plugins. Mine looks like this. So if I go up a directory, I have at the root level Lua, and then I go into this plugins.lua, and this has a large Lua table. Check out my other video on configuring plugins with lazy NVim, and you can see how I have my setup. For us, we care about two plugins. So this one is gonna be the Lua Rocks, which is gonna manage our Magic Rock. I'm not sure why this can't pull from what we just installed mainly with Lua Rocks, but maybe somebody can let me know in the comments about why there's a difference. But I did find that this did have to be in the config, otherwise it did not work. So add this and make sure the priority is high so it can install before everything else. And then this is our image.invim, which is the thing that's going to be doing all the work for us. I will leave a link in the description to the article again, so you can copy this entire config. Most of it is just the default off of the website. I left out a couple of blocks because I don't use them, but essentially um, the resolve image, I tried to play around with a little bit. Everything else is pretty normal. Um, I'll go over this one here in just a little bit about rendering the image of the cursor. But essentially you want to install this and we're configuring the markdown section because we want to render our images inside of obsidian this is kind of the overall goal of what i was trying to achieve with this there's a lot of different options that you have if you have this working to render images but that was my overall goal and i'll show you later how i had to do that so install this config Again, it, this doesn't really fit on the whole screen, so it's hard to see. Check out the link in the description, and I'll also have a link to my GitHub page showing where I installed this as well. And once you restart NeoVim, you should have this install, and you should be able to see images inside of NeoVim and Tmux. So we've installed everything, and now I expected to crack open our Obsidian Vault, and then go into a markdown file and see something render. So if we did that with a chat GPT, then down here, we should be able to hover over it and see that the image displays. Instead, nothing really happens because of the way that this markdown works inside of Obsidian. So in order for me to change this, I had to go into local share, invim, lazy, and then in here, we can go into image.invim, Lua image integrations and markdown.lua. And here at the very bottom of this file, you can see that there is a current image.url. And this doesn't quite work with finding the location for where those images are inside of my Obsidian Vault. And so for right now, I am basically hard coding this only in my local config to hard code that URL which breaks any remote URLs. So there's a trade-off here of basically making this work for the use case that I use all the time, which is in my Obsidian Vault, and breaking literally everything else. I wanna revisit this, and I have an open issue, which I'll link in the description as well, on making this configurable and having a better way. This is how I have it set up currently. And so if we close this out, and then we open back up our Obsidian Vault, then we can go back into ChatGPT, and we have images that render whenever I hover over them, which is really awesome. So this is kind of the goal of what I wanted to have happen, and I'm really pleased with it. Now I will show you 
some other options that I experimented with and where they kind of crashed and burned. And if you have had better experience with these other ones and you recommend them, definitely let me know in the comments and I will check them out and kind of play around with them a little bit more. Another open issue that I want to talk about is that if you switch sessions inside of Tmux, so if I jump over to another one, you can see that the image is still at the bottom, which is pretty crazy to me. Uh, I have an open issue for this one as well, which I'll link in the description. I think this is probably something that may have gotten fixed and maybe it's just on my machine, but hopefully this gets resolved all by itself. Just giving you a heads up in case you see kind of this weird behavior. And that's why I configured mine to only do it on cursor hover. And so if I'm hovered on something, then I want to see it. And if I'm not, then I don't have this problem of it being displayed in different sessions. All right, I hope you took that and you're able to use that information to configure your own image.invim configuration to see images and render them in your NeoVim instance. I think this is really cool and honestly, I'm super excited to use it day in and day out. Now we will get into all the other things that I tried, which there's a lot. Uh, and I hope that this gives you an idea about all the different things that I explore for some of these videos and maybe a little bit of sympathy for how long it takes me to do this. The first one that I tried was Ranger. And for this one, we're gonna go into a non Tmux OS window inside of Kitty. I'm still using Kitty, but you can see I don't have the header block at the top, which you would see for Tmux. So this is a Tmux session, and this is a non Tmux session. If we open up Ranger here, then we should see a little bit of our file system. And if we go into attachments, then you can see that I have the preview set up, and this is configured by going into our config, ranger rc.config. And so setting preview images to true and then preview images method to kitty, this will let you do that preview and you can see that it works really great. However, whenever I tried to bring this into NeoVim, this does not work. Like the ranger.invim plugin just doesn't support image previews. And so you basically are left with no preview. The other thing is this doesn't work for Tmux sessions. So if I did Ranger, let's go back to that directory first. We'll do documents. And if I did Ranger in here, then you can see that the preview window does not work either. So this one did not work in Tmux and the Ranger.invim plugin didn't really work either. The other plugin that I tried next was hologram.invim which I had really high hopes for. Unfortunately, this also does not work with Tmux, and so it kind of crashed on the rocks of trying to get this to work within Tmux. I got it to work inside of the normal terminal, but lo and behold, it didn't work inside of Tmux. This one uses the Kitty Graphics protocol, so I thought maybe I'd have a chance here, but unfortunately, hologram.invim did not work. Next up, I tried image underscore preview dot invim, and this one actually did work in Tmux, but I couldn't get the full resolution results to work. I ended up installing Chaffa and VIU to get this one to work because it depends on a different image rendering library. This one I'll, I'll revisit and maybe try again in the future, but unfortunately I couldn't get it to work inside my config, and also I couldn't get the image viewing to work with Obsidian. So more to come on this one, but it didn't work for me at this point in time. The next plugin I tried was a telescope extension. It's called Telescope Media Files. And this one, I really like the idea of it of hooking an image viewer into telescope and being able to search for different images. It's different from the use case I was originally going for, but this one uh, wouldn't work inside of Tmux. And so I abandoned it because I really just couldn't get it to work at all inside of my config. The last one I tried to use was Fey or F-E-H and this one I, I couldn't even get running outside of anything inside of the normal terminal because I just got this can't open X display error. I wasn't sure where to go with this and basically just abandoned it early on. If you ever use this one and kind of give me some pro tips, that'd be great. All right, that rounds out all the different experiments I tried. If there's one that you're using that I have not tried or you have some information that would help me with some of these other plugins, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. And I truly appreciate everybody who comments and gives me ideas for different things to explore next. I thought this was a nice deviation from our jumping plugins series, and I thought maybe we could experiment with some rendering, and I'm pretty happy with the results. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.